Hello, 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 Spriggans. How to improve at combat for any level of content. Let's go. Whether you're a sprout or a veteran of Final Fantasy XIV, I'll be covering snapshotting, what is it, dodging mechanics, mitigations, you should be using these, observing mechanics and how to do so, UI improvements, see clearly what's important, preparation for harbor level content. And hey, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out. Thanks. You may have heard the term snapshot or snapshotting from more experienced players in the game. What they are referring to is when certain things happen in the game, they are recorded at that time. When it comes to dodging mechanics, the snapshot is when the mechanic checks to see if you either did the mechanic correctly or not. The animation of a mechanic is not the snapshot or check, rather it is the visual result. Another form of snapshotting is when your character has a bunch of buffs applied to them and you use certain abilities that are recorded as having those buffs for their entire duration. Yes, that includes your dots, or damage over time, healing over time spells, and even increased HP effects allowing you to do some pretty crazy mitigation strategies. Snapshotting is essentially your character's position and actions recorded at the time the mechanic is executed on the server. The animation or VFX of the mechanic is separate. The difference is your position and actions are uploaded to the server, the VFX and animations are just a representation of the mechanic visually after the fact. Okay, hold up, what do I mean by all this? So a mechanic is just the attack the boss or enemies are doing. Your position is basically where your character is currently standing at the time. Now the reason why snapshotting is fair is because if you are lagging and you perform the movements correctly to dodge the mechanics, as long as your upload isn't affected by the lag, you will successfully do the mechanic. Whereas in a lot of other video games and MMOs, your positional data is usually directly tied with your latency and can be unfair for certain regions of the world. In this example, we can see that the target symbols are the snapshot and the lasers are the visuals. Of course, we are seeing this with my leg, but basically where the character ends up on their end is exactly where the laser hits. Another useful understanding of snapshotting is queuing your abilities and off global cooldowns or OGCDs, which are any actions listed as ability, and these can be weaved in between any spell or weapon skill. Queuing actions or abilities happen when you are either currently casting a spell or you are currently on your global cooldown. When you queue an action, as soon as your character is done their previous action, they will immediately do the next queued action or ability. Over dodging a mechanic can often lead to getting hit by the next immediate mechanic when they are done in quick succession. Now, you don't need to do pixel perfect dodging, however, moving the minimum amount is all that is needed for most mechanics. Dodging multiple mechanics can be tricky, but always remember the order of the mechanics is the order they are executed in, with the exception of some other mechanics like time warp effects in some fights. Pattern Recognition A lot of fight mechanics utilize patterns from other fights commonly used. These mechanics are fairly standard mechanics. A list of all the standard mechanics you will see are stacks, Doritos, chains, left, right, meteor, center explosion, puddles, flares, roll stacks, light party stacks, cone, towers, look away, look at, tank buster solo, tank buster soak, tank buster AOE, and many more. Okay, so too many to cover in this video, but you see these mechanics constantly throughout the game and are fairly self-explanatory except for Doritos which is, you just can't be alone. And we call them Doritos because of the orangish triangle. Simplify mechanics. Stop making it harder for yourself. In this example, I am dodging a mechanic that goes around in a circle, but the mechanic only goes around once and doesn't overlap. 
As a caster, you can use this to your advantage. Melee don't have to worry about this as much since most of all their actions are instant casts. Long memory patterns. Often players try to remember the entire pattern, but if we break it down in this fight specifically, we can see that the pattern is only as one way than the other until she does a double on one side. Well, all we have to do is remember when the double was, and the rest is very easy even as a caster. It also looks like the developers are moving away from the original big danger AoE marker on the ground and opting instead for more of a visual indicator from the boss, allowing for much more immersive boss mechanics. In this example, we can see the classic Dona AoE and Line AoE, but they look much better visually in this fight. Stop moving for others when you should stand your ground. Often we see people run into each other with certain mechanics because of latency differences, so let's break this down. If you're melee, you shouldn't be running out of range of the boss. If you're ranged, you can afford to move. But what if you're both ranged and both casters? Well, typically what I'll do is go to a spot and stay there. Others can move around me, but I also give them space. You shouldn't need to keep moving to the point that you're now missing out on casting spells. Unless you have instant spells up and it really does require a lot more movement. In mechanics like these, your AoE markers can overlap, as long as the overlap isn't hitting another player. Mechanics like stacks make it easier for people if you stop moving around so they don't have to chase you. However, being in the enemy's hitbox is ideal. One thing to note is the stack AoE is a lot bigger than people realize. You can stand inside the hitbox. Yep, you heard that right. You can stand inside the enemy's hitbox. You can also run through the boss's hitbox. You don't need to run around the enemy. This is something I saw happen a lot in Endwalker, where the bosses have massive hitbox circles. If you're trying to dodge a mechanic, the fastest way through is a straight line. And as long as your vision for other mechanics isn't being obstructed, you can stand inside the hitbox to minimize your movements, even as a caster. Mitigations are any ability or spell that reduces the incoming damage you receive or reduces the damage the enemy deals. Healers and tanks have special mitigations they are constantly using, but you, as a DPS, also have several that are quite often enough to survive. Alright, mitigation, so let's go over what mitigations some of the DPS have. Most DPS will have a role based uh, mitigation they can use. So if we look at here, the role based means we have melee DPS, is range DPS, and magical range DPS. These all have different role mitigations. So on magical DPS, we all share a role action called addle. And this is going to lower the target's physical damage dealt by 5% and magic damage dealt by 10%. has a 90 second cooldown and it lasts for 10 seconds um, and then at level 98 it gets increased to 15 seconds. This is a very powerful mitigation that you should be using on a lot of magic attacks in these raids. As far as personal mitts that the casters have, each one has their own personal mitt of a shield of some sort, except for Red Mage, theirs is a little bit different. Pictomancer has their Tempura Coat. And then we have Summoner, that has our Radiant Aegis. And then we have our Black Mage, they have a Mana Ward, which is a really big shield, it's a 30% of your maximum HP. And then Red Mage has Magic Barrier, which is actually a party buff. And it reduces magic damage taken by self and nearby party members by 10%, while increasing HP recovered by healing actions by 5%. So this is actually really good to heal up afterwards from a mechanic. Okay, next up we have Fizz Ranged, and you'll see here that we don't actually have a mitigation as a role-based action, but we actually have a shared role action. And a shared role action is essentially, um, it states here, effect cannot be stacked. 
Um, so on Dancer we have Shield Samba, and on Bard we have Troubadour, and on Machinist we have Tactician. And they all do the same thing. Their 90 second cooldown, it reduces damage taken by self and party members by 15%. That's all damage taken by 15%. That's actually like really, really good. That's why it's a shared cooldown between all Fizz range. Melee is a little bit different in mitigations. So all of them have the role based action Faint, which lowers targets physical damage dealt by 10% and magic damage dealt by 5%. Each of them has their own personal mit, but it's all different across the board, and they all have bloodbath, which allows them to heal afterwards. In this example, we reduce the boss's total damage dealt before other effects such as shields by over 35%, making the damage almost negligible with the other healer shields. Then, on the same attack, I use a personal shield here to reduce the damage to zero. How observing mechanics can save you, literally. When I first did this fight, I had no idea what any of the mechanics were going into the fight. I learned several new mechanics in the fight just by looking at the boss's visual indicators. A lot of the mechanics are the same things we are used to, the classic left-right dodge to the sequential pattern AoE we first saw in Proto Carbuncle. Some new mechanics we see in this fight have really great visual indicators if you're paying attention, so let's break them down. Here we see Black Cat is doing something brand new we've never seen before. She is uppercutting a target and they will be sent flying a certain distance, and the player can position themselves controlling where they will land. The indicator has several layers here, it's showing the path the player will take and whether or not the platform they land on will be safe. The platform is safe when it glows green, or it glows red and has a damaged effect if the platform is not safe. Wonderful. Here we see the classic left-right, but then she has another indicator. This was showing us that the boss is going to move before the mechanic is executed. How do we know this? Order of mechanics. The arrow indicator appears first, and then a tether to the boss is added. Then she is showing us what attacks she'll be doing afterwards. So here we can see she'll move to that position, attack left, then right, simple. Again, she is doing the same effect but with a different mechanic following it. She is going to be moving to the new position indicated by the arrow. Then she'll be doing the intercardinal attack followed by a cardinal attack that we've seen before. However, you might have noticed this time the order of the tether was after the first attack indicator but we know previously that she will move first. And yes, you do have a little bit of time to adjust if you miss the safe spot. Okay, so let's go over how we can use our UI to see things. Right here, this is the default UI you get out of the box. This is my a HUD layout 4, which I have not touched. It has elements missing, there are only two hotbars visible, and clearly you need more than that to do things, but also it has all of the defaults. So if I select my target here, I'm just going to target myself, and if I cast a spell, you can see that this is the cast bar up there, right up there, that little tiny thing. You're not really going to see that when you're noticing this or even just looking down at your hotbars. You're not going to see that. So here is my default layout that I use um, and I'm just using my second layout and so I've got more hotbars visible these are obviously extras and I can turn these on and off if I'd like during uh, raiding in combat with just a little macro here and uh, also if you go look at my target so we have several different things going on here first I'd like to point out that my static buffs are down here. These buffs aren't really important, but they also include things like your food. So if I were to eat some food here, you'd show it pops up here. When I have other buffs on my character, they actually display in a separate section. So I'm going to go to HUD layout 4 and just show you that for a second here. So here's my food buffs up here. These are kind of in the way. This is where my target usually is. I don't know why 
I don't need them up here, okay? So if I buff myself, you'll see that it's all in the same uh, buff window up here. When I go into my hut, this is separate. So now I can see all of the party buffs and temporary buffs that I have during combat in a separate window that I can control. And my target window, you can see the cast bar is right here, almost in the center of the screen. So I can see exactly what the boss or enemy is casting right in front of me. So these are some just simple UI changes you can do. If you wanna unlock these changes, we'll just go into our HUD layout here, and then I'm gonna reselect my character here. So here on the target info HP, we can click this little gear settings here. And by default, it's gonna look like this. It would be at 100%, I have it 140, but I have these all separated. So now you can control the size of all of these separately and you can separate them. So the target is just going to be your target here and it has its target as well included in this target info HP box. Then you can have the progress bar separated, which is this guy over here. And you can also have the status, which are going to be all of the debuffs and buffs on your target. And I've made this 160% so I can really see what's going on. Um, and the debuffs will show up first. You can also see the HP bar um, will have a percentage on it. So when I attack this guy, it has the percentage up here. And to access that, we're going to go into our character configuration. And we have a bunch of UI options that we can go over here, but just quickly, we can go into uh, UI options, and I believe it's under the HUD right here. So under targets, we have display targets remaining HP percentage. So when you have the, there's no damage done to the striking dummy here, we can see that it's a level 100 monster, and then it still displays 100 there, but then as soon as we hit it with something, we can now see that it's taking damage. Another thing I would say for a tip for your UI is you want to be able to see things as best as possible for what your monitor size is and how you play. So here I have my hot bars. They're stacked pretty tightly close together. And um, I have a few other hot bars that I can turn on and off depending on the situation. So here I have like my companion abilities and a few other things that I use regularly. And I have this macro set up here. So I can hide unnecessary things while I'm in harder level content. It's a very simple macro. So it's just going to be here. So I just have slash HUD and uh, the this is a toggle, this on off thing. So you just do, I have duty list, gill, main menu, inventory, grid, and hot bar display four. And so that's going to be this one. This is hot bar display four. Here's my inventory grid. Um, this is the main menu right here uh your currency it just says uh um gill but it will be all of your currencies that you have here and then your uh, duty list is this entire thing but the most important part would definitely be to put things that are important to you in areas of the screen that work for you so if we go here and i select the target dummy here you notice that the enmity list is right here and i believe on hudleo the default one it's like underneath your party list here this thing will stack uh, i think it can display up to eight enemies and now it's it, since it's right here it's actually going to go down and cover up my text chat here obviously if you're in combat you could like alter how big this is you can also just hit the x there but sometimes it's useful to see if other people are chatting in your combat. Um, to bring it back up, you just start typing again. So if I go to my HUD layout 2, it starts here. So if I'm tanking and I'm fighting a bunch of enemies and I see one of them is not uh, red for me, like it's it's orange, yellow, or green, and I'm tanking, I might, I'll might i be able to select it from this list very easily. And it's right next to where my mouse pretty much is, which is generally in the center of the screen. Okay, sorting your party list. This happens automatically when you enter a duty. 
However, if you're outside of a duty and you've joined a party and you want to sort it, uh, when you have party members in your party, you can just hit the sort party list button. But how do you change that? Well, you can either just hit this party list settings button, which just brings up the character configuration. So, and it just goes to UI settings, party list. And here we can set each uh, setup to be dependent on the role. So if I am currently, I'm a DPS, so it's going to list the four DPS first, then it's going to list the two tanks, then the two healers. And this, of course, you're in an uh, alliance raid, then it's just going to be the five DPS, one tank, two healers. And this will switch the order depending on if I'm a tank or a healer. <clears throat> so, and your name will always show up first. And then you can go into individual role sort settings. So say you always want to have a specific role sorted first. I haven't really changed these because they don't really matter to me as much as a DPS. But if you're a healer or a tank and you always want to see a specific person above someone because they are a specific tank um, or a specific healer, then this is where you would go to do that. Otherwise, you can just change the order in which you want them to appear. So as a tank, I usually have tank first and then DPS and then healer last. But if I'm raiding as a tank, I would do tank healer mostly because they uh, there is a lot of mechanics that split um, into role groups instead of light party groups and role groups will be there'll be a DPS group and then there'll be a support group which would be tanks and healers that's why you would want to have tank healer then DPS so you can see all four roles as separate and then um, because I'm a DPS I have DPS first and then I like to have tank healers and this will all be personal preference of course but this is how you can change all that. And then if you're outside of it, a duty, once again, you can hit that sort party list and that will automatically sort it if you're just out in the regular world. Okay, so uh, here we can control our camera angle to see more of what's going on. So right here as a Lollafell, um, I'm zoomed in. I can see my character quite well and I can even go lower than that to see my character. Which is nice and like just general playing around be able to see your character and when i zoom out you can see that i'm seeing a lot of the floor it's taking up half of my screen and it's the same camera angle i was looking at when you zoom out so how do we change our camera angle so that we can see more well the hotkeys are control and the up and down arrows if you're on controller unfortunately i don't know what the buttons are but uh, on mouse and keyboard you can do this on the fly to adjust so that you can see more and then you can also target yourself and focus target so you'll have this little arrow and this UI will appear in front of all other characters so even though my character is hidden here underneath my retainer here you can still see um, my little arrow is showing where I am and then if you wanted to change your camera angle permanently you can open up the character configuration under the control settings general tab scroll down to the bottom here and you'll see this third person camera angle and this is what I'm changing the control and up and down arrows preparing for higher level content can be quite daunting if you're new to all this the main preparation groups take or statics will include being pre-raid or raid ready. This involves having the proper gear for the content you're approaching and the correct melds for both your job and budget. Find out what is the correct food you'll be using for the raid. And remember that sometimes these can change throughout a series. So make sure to check back every now and then. You'll also be using potions or pots for short to push past certain DPS requirements of a fight. Your pot will always be associated with your job's main stat. Tanks all use strength pots, melees use strength or dexterity, casters all use intelligence pots, and healers use mind pots. Oh, and vitality pots still exist, but <laughs> who uses those anyways? Over the years, pots have been given different names, from potions to tinctures to now gem drafts, but 
Pots was the original name, and it's mostly stuck. Okay, but how do I find out what my food, gear, and what materials are needed? You don't expect me to figure this all out myself, do you? No, but it can be fun if you want to crunch the numbers. Or just use the resources the community has created. There are several widely available, and in NA most people use The Balance, which is a website and Discord community dedicated to all of this. Speaking of The Balance, it's also a really great resource to use to learn your job's rotation and openers for fights. After all, arriving prepared also includes knowing how to play the job you're going to be raiding on. Party Finder Prep First of all, if you can't find a static or group to run these with, you can always use the in-game Party Finder section. Now, usually guides for PF come a bit later into a raid tier, and they may change over time as well, but generally they use guides that require little to no communication via voice chat or even text. PF language and etiquette can be a lot for those new to the system, but most players are quite friendly and don't mind explaining, especially in learning parties. Raid Markers and Player Markers Some groups will use an array of different raid markers or player markers to help navigate harder level content. A common practice is to organize players into common auto-position scenarios. A player will usually place a marker or set of markers down at the beginning of a fight to self-assign a position. That way, there's no conflict during the actual mechanics. These are mostly fight-specific, but common auto-positions are Protians, Light Parties, Partners, and any special positions that may be needed for specific mechanics. It's okay to stop and watch the mechanics to learn the fight. You don't always need to be pressing your buttons in perfect rotation all the time. Take some of the stress off while learning complex mechanics so that you can process them easier. Blind run or learning from a guide? This will all depend on your group or static and even party finder. Lots of groups do blind learning and quite enjoy the process of learning the fight's mechanics themselves. A lot of raiders use guides however, so don't feel pressured either way, this is always a personal preference. My final note would be to any groups that were to tweak a fight specifically only for uptime. Now this depends on the group, but generally it's easier to learn a fight than tweak or change how you do mechanics to account for better uptime. There's no point in getting those two extra hits in while learning a fight if all you're going to do is wipe the raid because of it. But I'm in a caster, so lol, get wrecked melee. Just aside, as a caster, I'm always trying to find the most opportune time to cast specific spells in my rotation so that I'm always ready for the two minute burst window. Wow, that was a lot, and honestly, I've never done a video this big before, so if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Comment below if any part of this video helped you out, whether it was in normal, casual content, or even high-end content. As always, stay hydrated, be kind to someone today, even if it's being kind to yourself, and I'll see you in the live streams. Bye for now.